So in this session, we will be discussing on the numericals for the concepts in optical fiber. In the previous session, you have already seen the prerequisites that is required for solving the numericals in optical fiber. Some of the basic concepts such as critical angle of total internal reflection, okay, numerical aperture, acceptance angle, V number, uh, some of the losses that is seen in optical fiber quantified through your uh, attenuation. All these relations you have seen in your previous lecture. Now in this lecture we will be solving problems based on this each and every concepts of optical fiber in a basic level. In this session we will be uh, basically discovering the uh, you know, problems or numericals apart from what is given in your assignment 3A. We will be having another session where we will be solving the assignment uh, 3A problems. So let's get into the first problem. The first problem is pretty simple or straightforward. The question goes like this. The refractive indices of core and cladding are 1.5 and 1.48 respectively in an optical fiber. Find the numerical aperture and angle of acceptance. For this, write down the given data as soon as the question is asked. Then you can think about what is the parameters that need to be found out and thereby finally solving the problem and write down the summary. This is how this step goes. First, the given data for the given problem is that refractive index of core is given, refractive index of cladding is given. N1 is the refractive index, N1 is equal to 1.5 and N2 is 1.48. And you have to find the numerical aperture and angle of acceptance. Now, since the given data is clearly seen there, you can sketch out a small diagram so that you can basically understand what need to be done. So, the diagram goes like this, you have an optical fiber, the optical fiber has core and cladding. Of course, core's refractive index is greater than the cladding's refractive index, so N1 is greater than N2 and you have the angle of acceptance theta naught where light is traveling and marking an angle theta naught. So, what is the formula that needs to be used? Theta naught is the acceptance angle. What is the angle at which it accepts light? Okay. And numerical aperture is a number that tells you the capacity bearing of a optical fiber. Just a number, doesn't have any unit. For this, we will be using this equation theta naught is equal to sin inverse of root of n1 square minus n2 square divided by n0. Now theta naught is the acceptance angle. Sin inverse of root of n1 square, n1 is your refractive index of the core, n2 is the refractive index of the cladding, n0 is the refractive index of the surrounding medium. Of course, the surrounding medium is not given, the refractive index of surrounding medium is not given in the question. So let's assume that n0 is air, meaning that n0 is the value of n0, refractive index is 1. So for light traveling from air to optical fiber, n0 is equal to 1. Put in this into this equation and it reduces to theta0 is equal to sin inverse of root of n1 square minus n2 square. Okay. So Substitute all the given values because n1 is known, n2 is known, meaning that it is given already in the problem. So once you put in, so you get theta0 is equal to sin inverse of root of 1.5 square minus 1.48 square. Use the calculator properly. So I will not be showing how to use the calculator. I assume that everyone knows how to use the calculator. Use the proper brackets as shown in the explanation. So you will finally get the answer. Substituting these values, you get theta naught is equal to 14.1 degree. Now, what is 14.1 degree? 14.1 degree is the acceptance angle of this optical fiber so that light can propagate inside the optical medium that is your optical fiber. Okay. Now, for the given nature of optical fiber that is N1 and N2, what would be your numerical aperture? That is the capacity of this optical fiber to where the light inside. So for finding numerical aperture, it's pretty straightforward. Take the sine of this angle theta naught. That gives you a small number without any unit. 
so that gate tells you your numerical aperture so acceptance angle so that numerical aperture na is equal to sin of this theta naught which is sin of 14.1 degree which is equal to 0.24 0.244 is a numerical aperture of the given optical fiber. So once the problem is complete, try to summarize by saying the acceptance angle of this given optical fiber theta naught is equal to 14.1 degree by which the light can propagate inside the medium and then numerical aperture of the same medium or the optical fiber is 0.24. Make sure that your calculators are in the mode of degree not in radian because we are calculating everything in degree, not in radian. Okay. So this is a straightforward problem, trying to understand what is acceptance angle, what is numerical aperture of optical fiber, practical understanding of it. Okay. Let's go to a second problem, more in detail on what is happening into the optical fiber. Second problem goes like this, an optical fiber has a core material with refractive index 1.55 and its cladding material has a refractive index of 1.5. The light is launched into it in the air. It's pretty, uh, you know, kind of a tricky statement, so I have to read carefully. The light is launched into it in air. Okay. Calculate its numerical aperture, the acceptance angle, and also fractional index change. So, there is one more thing added, numerical aperture and acceptance angle was the same redundant one what we had asked in the previous question. But here there is one fractional index change. Everyone knows what is fractional index change. Okay. In theory, fractional index change, you have learnt that there is a small jump in the refractive index as soon as light travels from the core to cladding. This change or fractional index change or the change in the refractive index is what keeps the light inside the optical fiber. How it keeps depends and changes the whole configuration of types of optical fiber. We've already studied single mode, okay, multi-mode, step index fiber, and then graded index multi-mode fiber. So there your fraction index concept comes into picture. How rapidly the rep uh, you know refractive index changes and how slowly refractive index changes, whether it is slow increment or a sudden increment of refractive index, because N1 is always greater than N2. So that we are going to see here. So write down the given data. Given data is N1 is 1.55, obviously it is greater than N2, the cladding's refractive index 1.50. And here this statement tells you from where the light travels, into the optical fiber. Light is launched into it in air. Into it, it means the optical fiber in air. So air is the medium, N0 is equal to 1, which means straightforward that N0 is equal to 1. Okay. So what is the things that are you supposed to found? So Na, numerical aperture, that is the capacity of the optical fiber, a small number, and theta naught, acceptance angle, and delta, which is a new added addition to this problem that is fractional index change. Again it is a straightforward problem. So what are the formulas or mathematical relations that you will be using is based on your sketch diagram. Sketch it out so you have your same optical fiber N1, N2, N1 is greater than N2, it not to be found out and delta is the added thing. So you will be using theta naught which is acceptance angle is equal to sine inverse of root of n1 square minus n2 square. Now it has already been reduced. n0 is already put in. Okay, This uh, denominator which was n0 is already put in the value 1 and you get theta naught. Numerical aperture Na is equal to sine of this theta naught what you get. And finally when you have n1 and n2 so you can find delta. Delta is a small change that is happening. Okay, when you go from N1 to N2, that you are finding delta. So we will substitute all the values into it and theta naught will get 23 degree. I don't have to show the working out here. So sine inverse of root of N1 square which is 1.55 square minus N2 1.50 square okay, leads to theta naught which is in degree again 
Okay, all the calculations have to be in degree. Make sure that your calculator shows D as the mode to calculate. And once you have theta naught, that is 23 degree is the angle of acceptance. Okay, this theta naught. You can take sine of this theta naught and you will get the small number which tells you the capacity of this particular optical fiber is 0.39. So sine of 23 degree gives you 0.39. And delta is the fraction index change n1 minus n2 by n1. So you put in the values n1 minus n2 by n1, 0 0.03. This tells you how a small change is happening when light encounters this interface n1 and n2. Okay. This will decide whether it is step index or graded index and all those types of optical fiber what you see. You already seen in the types of optical fiber that there is a slow increment from n1 to n2. Okay, leading to a curved path okay, that tells you the graded index value. So this problem is dealing with the fraction index, numerical aperture, acceptance angle. So problems can be based on this. Okay. So once the problem is done, make sure that you summarize it properly. You can write down at the end that in this optical fiber, the numerical upper, the acceptance angle theta naught is found to be 23 degree, numerical aperture 0 0.39 and the fractional index change is 0 0.032. That will complete your so-called your problem analysis. Let's move on to another problem. It's quite different. It's not straightforward. So here your thinking need to be critical more. Okay. This problem goes like this. The numerical aperture of an optical fiber is 0 0.2 when surrounded by air. Okay, listen carefully. The numerical of, of, of an optical fiber is 0 0.2 when surrounded by air. Determine the refractive index of its core given the refractive index of cladding is 1.59. Also find the acceptance angle when the fiber is in water. Assume the refractive index of water as 1.33. So in this what are the things that is given? Numerical aperture is already given. It's a number which doesn't have unit. It tells you the capacity of optical fiber. So it is 0 0.2. When surrounded by air, when it is in air, it is saying numerical aperture 0 0.2. Of course, numerical aperture depends on the medium in which your optical fiber is propagating. Remember, okay? So it's surrounded by air, it's 0 0.2. Determine the refractive index of its core when refractive index of cladding is 1.59. So cladding's refractive index is already given 1.59. You have to determine the coarse refractive index. And also you have to find the acceptance angle when the fiber is in water. Now he changes the whole concept. He says that light traveling from okay, one medium to into the optical fiber, the one medium is the water, you have to find the acceptance angle during that scenario. He also says that the water's refractive index, assume it to be 1.32. Okay. So you have to be little bit careful here and try to write. Remember the acceptance angle and numerical uh, aperture depends on the external refractive index. That is your, uh, let's say for example you have external medium like water, air or any liquid. So numerical aperture and your acceptance angle theta naught depends on the external mediums refractive index. So let's write down the given values. Given data, numerical aperture is 0 0.2. Now this is numerical aperture in the bracket, there's something missing here, you can just put it down. Numerical aperture in air. Okay, just I have left it out because it's quite redundant, assuming that it's always air, so I just left it out as NA. Okay. Just to be clarify even more better, you can put a bracket, I can write air because now we have a relative thing, air as well as water. N2 will not change, N1 will not change because it is the intrinsic property of an optical fiber, so it won't change at all. So N2 is 1.59 and N0 which is assumed to be 1.33, that is N0 is the medium's refractive index, water. Okay. What are the things to be found out? N1 need to be found out. N1 is the refractive index of the core. And you have to find theta naught that is acceptance angle in water. Okay. So for that you write down the diagram. So first of all, 
It's a blue patch that tells you that there is water, meaning that a medium that is just to make sure that you know it is a different medium. I have put a blue patch, and then you have optical fiber N1 and N2 is the refractive index of pore and cladding, N1 greater than N2, and you have theta naught. Okay, this is how you can conceptualize the figure. Okay. Now, what are the expression that is used? This is again straightforward in the beginning because you have the only one expression for acceptance angle theta naught is equal to sine inverse of n1 square minus n2 square by n naught. Now n naught had to be specified because you have two different medium air and water. Okay. Use the equation numerical aperture is equal to sine theta naught is equal to root of n1 square minus n2 square by n naught. It's the same equation remember okay. Only theta naught is equal to sine inverse was written because we are using inverse function to find theta naught. And if you want to find numerical aperture, then you have sine of theta naught. So only sine inverse is the only difference. There. So since numerical aperture is given, you write down directly because n one is not given. N one need to be found out, and n naught is given okay, in the beginning. Okay. So write down for air, n naught is equal to one. For air, n naught is equal to one. So numerical aperture of an optical fiber in air is 0.2. Remember. So, for this, we can put the values that numerical aperture is known and N2 is known, okay, N1 is not known, so you can get the value of N1 out of this. Because N1 and N2 won't change, okay, as a function of different refractive index uh, of uh, the external medium, okay, remember. N1 and N2 is the intrinsic property of the, uh, the so-called optical fiber, so it won't change at all. By substituting the values, for Na and N2, we can get N1 out of it. So Na, numerical aperture, okay, which is same equivalent to sine of theta naught, okay, 0.2, is equal to root of N1 square, which is uh, not given, okay, minus you have to be found, find, you have to find out N1, minus 1.59 square, which is the cladding's refractive index. Okay, once you put down, you can calculate N1. How you can find? Take square on both sides, 0.2 square and this square. So square square root cancels out. You have n1 square minus 1.59 square. Take 1.59 square this this side on the uh, left hand side. So you get n1 is equal to root of this 0.2 plus 1.59 square. So you add all of them and you get n1 is equal to root of that quantity as 1.6. I hope it is clear. Okay. So once you get n1 now you can move forward and you can calculate theta naught in any manner. So while in water n naught is equal to 1.33, meaning the refractive index of your material, that is what you are seeing surrounding medium, that is water, is 1.33. Now he has asked theta naught in water is what? You have already found out n1, so part of your problem is complete. You have to find what is theta naught in water. So, use the same equation and find theta naught. Theta naught is, you know, from the numerical aperture and the theta naught, you know that numerical aperture is equal to sine of theta naught is equal to root of n1 square minus n2 square by n naught. Put in all the values. Okay, put in all the values and finally, you put in 1.6 square minus 1.59 square divided by 1.3 you will get the value of sine of theta naught and hence your theta naught which is sine inverse of this value what you get. So what is this? This is your numerical aperture value and sine inverse of this numerical aperture uh, value will directly fetch you theta naught which is acceptance angle. So you now summarize. Okay? Now what is theta naught? Theta naught what you found out here is the acceptance angle that is 8.65 degree theta naught acceptance angle is the angle at which light gets into your fiber optical fiber through 8.65 degree okay, in water remember you have to summarize and also you found out n1 that is coarse refractive index i hope it is clear okay now it is quite tricky to understand here Numerical aperture and acceptance angle are the external factors. They depend on the external medium, remember. Okay. So they depend on which medium the light is traveling from into your optical fiber. 
theta naught and numerical aperture. Hence, the subscript for numerical aperture, water or air, have to be clearly specified. Okay. Right. Let's move on to the next problem. The next problem is about calculate the V number for an optical fiber of core diameter 40 micrometer and with refractive indexes, indices of 1.55 and 1.50 respectively for core and cladding. When the wavelength of propagating wave is 1400 nanometer, also calculate the number of modes that the optical fiber can support for propagation. Assume that fiber is in air. Now, V number will tell you how many number of modes an optical fiber can support in a particular system. A light wave is information that is carried through light photons or anything in a wave nature inside this optical fiber using your method of total internal reflection. So the criteria is your critical angle meaning that any angle should be less than your uh, greater than your critical angle then only light propagation can happen. Write down the given values. The given data is N1 is equal to 1.55 that is refractive index of the core. Refractive index of the cladding is 1.5. The thickness of the optical fiber that is nothing but diameter of the optical fiber is 40 micrometer. Okay. Which is a part of million remember. So 40 into 10 power minus 6 meter meaning as soon as the data is given convert it to a psi unit. So you apply this prefix part and then you get it exponents. The wavelength of the light that you are using is 1400 nanometer converted to meter again. Once you have this, you have all the given data. Now he is asking calculate the number of modes. Now we know that number of modes that are supporting the optical fiber is calculated not directly but using V number. V number is a again dimensionless quantity but will tell you how many modes can be supported in the optical fiber. So you have to calculate V number. For V number, you have to find V number as well as number of modes. To find V number, you will be using equation V is equal to pi times d divided by lambda root of n1 square minus n2 square by n0. And by using the V number, you can calculate on a very basic level because this is a kind of approximation that you are using. Okay. This is only for step index multimode fiber where there is a several modes of uh, vibrations or modes of uh, you know, propagation that is allowed in optical fiber. So it's kind of approximation saying that once you find V number you can calculate number of modes approximately V square by 2. Okay. So V is the V number which will not tell you the modes directly. Number of modes in an optical fiber is given by V square by 2. That is you square it and divide by 2 and you will get number of modes that is accommodated in an optical fiber. Remember the fiber is in air meaning that light is traveling from air into the optical fiber medium. Okay. Use this equation. It's a straightforward problem. So for air N0 is equal to 1. You put N, N0 is equal to 1 and the equation. So by substituting the values we get V is equal to 3.1416 the pi value times 40 into 10 power minus 6 that is the thickness of the optical fiber whole divided by the lambda that is wavelength of light which tells you the color as well 1400 into 10 power minus 9 into root of 1.55 square minus 1.50 square divided by 1. This is also uh, the equation of numerical aperture remember okay only this part is numerical aperture well once you do this you get the value 35 as the answer okay now this will not tell you anything this is just a v number it's a, as same as your numerical aperture it's just a number dimensionless quantity but to have a physical understanding or physical significance we need to approximate that is number of modes by theory okay by theory apart from your uh, greater value of V value for fibers which can accommodate number of modes okay, is approximated to V square by 2. Let's square this 35 that is V number divided by 2 okay, and we will give you 612 approximately. Now this value 
even if it is in fraction or let's say in decimal point 612.9 you have to approximate it to 613 if you have 6 uh, uh, 10 okay something like that but to still approximate and give the number of modes because the modes cannot be in fraction okay since we have approximated the value also have to be approximated and kept in number of modes as 6 and 12 modes okay now as explained in theory this will tell you about the communication okay channels that can be accommodated in an optical fiber or in a homic cable that is you are using a let's say for example uh, uh, normal electronic or electrical wire where the information support system is supporting through your this cable so you can relatively calculate the values of number of channels or number of modes of communication used based on this okay v number problem v number is uh, quite efficient to understand the number of modes number of channels that can be accommodated in optical fiber so to go into detail of theory we can roughly use these values for calculating number of channels and all those once the problem is done make sure that you summarize saying that in this optical fiber the v number that we calculate is 35 and number of modes of propagation is approximated to 612 okay and also you found out v number as well as number of modes you summarize it properly so this is all about the problem on v number let's go to the next problem if you have to find the attenuation in an optical fiber of length 500 meter when a light of power 100 milliwatt emerges out of fiber with a power 90 milliwatt now remember it's attenuation problem attenuation is all about the loss in of optical fiber the loss of information in optical fiber as we say that this optical fiber is not quite ideal okay it also has its down end that is losses can be seen in various okay uh, various factors we have seen loss due to absorption loss due to scattering loss due to microscopic and macroscopic bending and all those finally the overall loss can be calculated through your number or it can be quantified using your attenuation so in this problem they are asking find that quantity that is quantification of this loss that is seen now of course this attenuation depends on your length of your optical fiber remember and how it is related it is inversely related that is more the length of your optical fiber alpha will be less we will be seeing shortly what is the equation that will be used write down the given data he says that the optical fiber length is half a kilometer 500 meter half a kilometer right in so called your meter just to notify that it is in terms of kilometer i am just writing it down because the overall equation will be in kilometer remember okay the amount of information that you are putting in at one end through light is 100 milliwatt okay the power is written in watt and 100 milliwatt is the input power that you are sending in in one end whatever information that you are receiving on the other end is 90 milliwatt okay so write down that and you have to find alpha that is attenuation in an optical fiber alpha the equation that we will be using is alpha is equal to minus 10 by l log to base 10 p out by p input and this whole equation or relation is in decibel per kilometer that is you are not in terms of si unit it is in kilometer remember and also this is a relative unit it is not in watt okay it is not in watt remember it is a decibel that is basically a relative unit normally this decibel is used whenever you access out with the very large number when you have logarithmic data okay or logarithmic relation you use this db okay now put in the values substitute the values inside this alpha equation and you get the direct problem that is alpha substituting the values we get alpha is equal to minus 10 by 0.5 log to the base 10 90 to 10 power minus 3 because milli is there of course it cancels out but still properly you should, you should substitute divided by p input that is input power 100 into 10 power minus 3 that is in decibel per kilometer or db per kilometer 
finally you get alpha is equal to 0.915 dB per kilometer. So this is your attenuation in optical fiber and attenuation will tell you what is the amount of power loss that is seen in any optical fiber. At the very end please summarize and make sure that you understand the problem. Sometimes there are problems given to you where the P output and P input is not given. You have to find the so called the ratio when alpha is given. When alpha is given you have to make sure that inverse functions are used and make sure this log to the base 10 goes off. That is already discussed in your second part of your problem discussion. We will be seeing it. Okay. Thank you.